we really want to make this thing very practical this year, even more so than we've done in the past, because we need you to start winning if you're not winning. The goal of this church is that we walk through, we disciple you in your, your Christianity or your, your decision to follow Jesus so you can win in every area of life. Um, John 10.10 10 says, I come that you may have and enjoy life in abundance to the full till it overflows. And if you be honest, a lot of us are not doing that consistently. That was not a command um, that we do that sometimes. We should live there. Um, I was watching a 1980-something teaching from um, Dr. Fred Price, who just went to heaven, and he said these words in that teaching. He says, I've not been discouraged in 18 years. What is that? Um, and, and I think we can't just look over those things and hear those things and say, well, praise God. There are men in the earth setting examples for us that have set examples of how we can live this thing out and not have lack. Live this thing out and not struggle. Live this thing out and not have a discouraging day in 18 years. What is that? 18 years you've never been discouraged? And the first thing we'll say, because we don't believe what we preach and what we read, oh, he lying, he didn't have to have a bad day. No, 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 no. The Bible says, let not your heart be discouraged. Let not your heart be troubled. You're in charge of that. And when you take this word beyond the pages, you can produce at will what you want in your life. Not just cars and not just houses and not just jobs, but peace and joy. And see, peace is not the absence of confusion. Peace is when everything is going haywire, I can sit like we showed you up here and cross my legs like Pastor Twan and not be bothered. And a lot of us are too bothered. We're too bothered. And, and, and I pray that we get revelation of this word, that we can walk in seasons in our life where we are not bothered, that we are not, we are not hindered, that we're not discouraged because it is possible. Say amen. amen. I didn't get no amens there. So Luke 16 says, he that, verse 10, he that is faithful in that which is least is faithful also in much. And he that is unjust in the least is also um, unjust in much. The least here, if you study it out, and I've told you before, refers to money. Write down money. Verse 11, if therefore ye have not been faithful in the unrighteous mammon, um, write down or underline unrighteous mammon and write down money that's opposed to God money that's opposed to the will of God. So if you've been, um, not been faithful in the unrighteous man, and who will commit to your trust the true riches? Verse 12, and if you have not been faithful in that which is another man's, who shall give you that which is your own? This, this, that, we can teach a whole year on that verse right there. It is so important that we understand stewardship, that we understand submission, that we understand humility and what doesn't belong to us. We should be just as gracious with it, just as on top of it as if it were our own. That is not just talking about church and going to church and listening to your pastor or I want to be a minister so I got to submit to another minister first. It's talking about anything in your life that's not your own. If you work at a job that is not your job, that's somebody else's company. It is required of you to be a good steward over that other man's stuff so you can one day have your own thing. So if you're going to work late, you're still in pens, you're leaving early, you're taking three hour lunches, you're not being a good steward or faithful over that which belongs to another man's. We don't look at it as that, do we? We, we only refer Bible scriptures to church as if this will help me get elevated in the kingdom. I want to be elevated in life. Come on, because some of y'all some of your grace is not even for in here. It's a marketplace grace. So you don't need to be trying to chase the deaconship. Come on, say amen to this stuff. So verse 12, and if you have not been faithful in that which is another man's, who shall give you that which is your own? Verse 13, no servant can serve two masters. For either he will hate the one and love the other. I didn't say it. This is in the Bible. Or else... He will hold to the one and despise the other. Ye cannot serve God and mammon. Today we're talking about the end to mammon. And I hear you. You're right, Pastor. You can't serve God and have money. That is not what the scripture is saying. If I'm going to serve God and if I'm going to be a good kingdom citizen, I'm going to have to not be, have money and, and not be dealing with money. No, no, no. You need money. Tell your neighbor, say, you need money. How many of y'all can stand some more money right now? Come on, raise your hand. 
How many of y'all got enough money? You don't need no more. You're doing really good. Raise your hand because I want to talk to you as soon as service is over because we got good vision that needs provision. Are you listening to me? So you cannot serve God and mammon. So what is it saying, pastor? It's saying you cannot trust God, write it down, and be enslaved to money. What does enslaved mean? It means controlled by. You cannot trust God and at the same time be controlled by money. It doesn't work. You cannot trust God and be, money don't control me. I know how to go to the Walmart and, and get what I'm going to get and come up out of there. That is not what this is only talking about. That is a limited view of being controlled by money. Um, um, the, the original um, Aramaic word for mammon or definition for mammon is that in which one puts one's trust. That in which one puts one's trust. You trust in money. You trust in God. We just read you cannot do both. You cannot trust and serve God and trust and serve money. You can't follow the promptings of God and the promptings of money. You're going to get caught up so you're going to hate one and love the other. You're going to despise one, hold on to the other because you can't do both at the same time. And most people are struggling financially because the spirit of mammon has attacked your mind, your mindset, and you call it something else, but it is a spirit of mammon. It is causing you to try to trust God, but I also trust money. To love God, but I also have a wrong attachment to money. Ain't nothing wrong with you having money. I like money. I like to have enough money. I like to have plenty of money, but my money cannot have me. And most of you, your money has you, which is why you make certain decisions because it's all based on money. I told him last night, I took a job based on money. I made a mammon decision. I was working a job and I got offered another job that was paying $20,000 more. And I took the job on the spot. Why? Because of money. And, and that's what's wrong with that. It's more money. Money should not be driving your decisions because you can make less money and do more. You can make, make less money and spend more time with your family and still get your bills paid. But if money is making the decisions for you, you'll take a job just for money. I took a job just for the money. I knew when I took it, I shouldn't have taken it. But the money, $20,000 more, that's a whole nother tax bracket. So I'm thinking about we can do this and we can pay this off and we can do that. That's, that's all I'm thinking. In the car note, and I can do this, and I can still have some money left, and I made a mammon decision. How many mammon decisions have you made? That if you be honest, you're at the table now trying to figure out what you did. We bought houses, we bought cars, we bought clothes, we opened up credit lines and realized that was not the best decision for my money. But at the time, it sounded good based on where I was. And based on what I needed, even when you go to jobs, we don't consider the, the, the book that they give us, the handbook and all that. We're going to ask what you're paying and what is, when is payday. When you go to get a car, you don't look at the car and research the car. Some of us didn't. We first you ask what the car note going to be because you're calculating. I, I, I bring home a thousand dollars a month or two, every, every, every two weeks and, and I got to pay this. And I got to pay that. I got I got enough money to pay at least a three hundred dollar car note. So and you go in, you go in and you tell them you, you tell them, hey, I got three hundred dollars. What, what kind of car can I get? And then you leave there and realize a month later, once you grow in wisdom, that you got got. I, I, I bought a Geo Prism, a, 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 a ninety. Uh, two or three G, you know, Geo Prism, um, Geo Prism, that car don't cost no more, Devil, than about $12,000, $15,000 with all the whistles and bells. And, and, and I kid you not, I had to pay $55,000 for the car when it was all said and done because my interest rate was about 39%. But I just knew my car note was only going to be 300 so it worked for me. And I made a mammon decision. Y'all quiet up in here. See, we don't talk about these things in church. Um, K, take good pictures of me. I got a good sweater on today, so make sure you take that. See, um, you see? Yeah, come on. There, there you go. Okay, okay. All right. Um, <laughs> we, we don't talk about this in church because, because we've, been so, we've been made so spiritually elite that we're naturally dumb. And so you think I can make all the mistakes I want, but I'm going to go to church, I'm going to go to revival, and we're going to get a good sermon, I'm going to turn around three times, I'm going to sow a seed, and it's all going to disappear. No, sir, no, ma'am. You've been bamboozled. You've been, you've been, it, the game has been run on you. And there's a time to sow seed that is all God breathe. Let me tell you this, you don't even sow financial seed till the word becomes real in you. Because the seed is the word. 
Money is corresponding action to the word becoming alive in you. Y'all quiet now. Y'all quiet now. Once it becomes alive in you, there's a prompting by the Holy Ghost. Then you sow seed. Money seed. You, you react to the seed of the word that's become real to you. Oh, I got it. Boom. The lights came on. And, and I'm believing God for this. Believing God for that. Boom. The, 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 the eyes of my heart has been enlightened. This thing has become real to me. I get it now. And now the Holy Ghost prompts me to give $50. And he'll tell you where to give it. Y'all quiet. Because see, outside of that, we're just doing things and hoping and wishing. And I've seen it happen in church. I've seen people that give nothing. Then I've seen a guest speaker come through and give a fiery message. And those same people get in line and sow big money. Because now you're moving by your emotions. Moving by your flesh. And you're making mammon decisions even in church. So we're putting an end to mammon today. Come on, say the end to mammon. What is mammon? Write these down real quick. Mammon is money opposed to God. Mammon tells you that I don't need God because I got money. I ain't got to adhere to God. I ain't got to follow no principles. I'm good. I, I, I make $80,000 a year. I got my side thing going on. I got money in the bank. I got this. I got three streams of income. I'm great. I don't need God. That's what mammon tells you. Mammon is influence of the world as it relates to financial matters. You got to be careful of listening to all these worldly um, principles of money. A lot of it is people behind it just trying to make money off of your brokenness. I said that again. They're trying to make money off of your brokenness. They know you're broke. They know you're desperate. They know you're looking for a quick fix. So they get you. And they charge you $1,000 to give you three secrets or how to get rich by the mind. And, 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 come on now. But when you're desperate, when you're desperate, you do anything. Because they say it. And you got somebody selling you something they don't even have. They're selling you things they don't even have in their own inventory. If you do this, you can get a yacht on the beach. And they don't even have a yacht. They don't have a rowboat. They, they, don't, have, they, don't, they don't have nothing. But, but the, the system of the world, now I'm telling you, there, there, is, there is a way that you can live in this world but not of it and dominate the system of the world. You can live above it. You ain't got, you ain't got to spend time trying to down it. Just live above it. Live above it. Make it work for you. But, but it's hard to make right decisions when you're desperate. When everything is behind, when, when, when my phone is ringing off the hook, when there's red notices everywhere, it's hard to make right decisions because you're trying to just make it. You're trying to survive. You're trying not to get some cut off or they trying to. And, and, and see, we've done all of that. You've done. You've been there enough. They've come and got your car. They've come and got your TV. You might have ever had rent a center. You come rent them TVs and they come and get those because you didn't pay. We, you, we've been through all. We've done all of that. And you ought to be tired of that. You got to be tired of it. And I know you people say, we, why are we always talking about this? Because we got to talk about it. That's why you're tired right now. That's why you wall right now. Because you're working so hard and you still can't make ends meet. That's called toiling. That's a mammon system. And this is a finance series so we can all win and do better. You were created to do more than work eight hours a day and come home, get some rest, go to the laundromat, get, eat, eat some food, and go work eight more hours tomorrow, and then work eight more on Thursday, and then hope they give you four more extra hours on the weekend because you got to make ends meet. You were made for more than that. And there's so many things in your heart that you desire to do, your real purpose in life that you can't do because you got to put that on pause and make ends meet. And these teachings help you live above the system, move from just enough to enough to more than enough so I can take care of my bills, put things up for the future, and now do what God has called me to do. Now I have time to write the book. I have time to fund the YMCA down the street. I have time to build this. But I can't do it all because I got to work 80 hours a week and then I got 10 minutes left to do what I'm called to do. It's a girl, you want the book yet? I ain't had time. I, you should. I, I, listen, I work six days a week. When I get home, I'm tired. I got to take Jimmy to practice, and I got to go wash him. Then I, 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 I'm on the prep ministry, and I got to do this, and I just ain't had time to do it because, because, because you're, you're clocking in to keep up with all of the riches that you have. But if we can get to a place where we paid this off, I, when I started paying off stuff, Jason Mitchell, it's the feeling it's almost like the quickening that Jason Proctor did earlier. 
because somebody told us just do it all on, on time. Just pay $200 a month here and $50 a month here. And we had all these bills. We had everything. We had timeshares and this and that. And, 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 and I, 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 I got a plan. I told you this last time. I got a plan. So we're going to do this and we're going to save this. And we're going to put this up. And we're going to touch this. And, we're gonna, and so then we had this plan. And now we got all this money we've saved. Now here comes the, the distraction of you don't want to spend it all. Just keep it. Because once I had it, now I can hear clear. You can hear clear when you got enough money. Oh, you, listen, everything is bad when you ain't got enough money. You, the, the sex ain't the same. The, the house, no, it's friction in the house. Because we ain't got enough money. Everything's going on. It's like, you know, I, I know y'all, you, it's, it's good, but, but, but ain't nobody trying to have no sex on, on top of no light bill, no gas bill. And, 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 and you know. And the, the, plan, the plan wasn't even to have a romantic evening by candlelight. Your lights are out. And so we got this money, Elder Stacey, we got this money now. And I hear the Lord say, just pay this off, pay that off, pay that off, because I'm going to set you up for something else. And I'm like, well, no, I don't want if, if I pay it all off, then I ain't going to have no money. He said, pay it off. And I remember I, I, I called down to the timeshare people. We had this timeshare. And I says, you know, they, they, they got me. I was young and they got me. Made it look real sweet. It's sweet. It's no big problem with it. But I didn't have no business buying it at the time. I, I couldn't even pay attention. I had no business signing the line to buy no time shit. That's how you know the system is designed for you to fail. You can walk in a place with no money, bad credit, and they still give you something though you can't afford. And then harass you when you can't pay for it and come and get it when you don't. It's not right. But the system was not designed for you to win in it. That's why he says break from this system and live above it. This is not your system. You are in this world, but you're not of this world. Do not live on this system. It's not designed for you to win. They had no business giving me a timeshare and I had filed bankruptcy twice. I didn't have money to put down or anything and they gave me a $25,000 timeshare. You know, we come to church and testify about it. I'm thinking, praise God, I got me a vacation home. No, you, no, you got an apartment everybody else used in Florida that you're that you struggling to pay for. And he said, pay it off. And I remember, I said, we're going to pay this off. She said, well, go on, pay it off then. And I felt like there was something wrong to pay it off because I'm so used to paying, just pay every month. Just give them $200 and keep, you know, he said, pay it off. I remember I went in our account. And I, and I, 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 right then, you had to write a check. I wrote a check for fifteen thousand dollars and paid it off. And 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 although I was trembling, it felt good. So now, now the three hundred bucks, the three hundred and twenty-six dollars and thirty-two cent that I was paying for the timeshare, I can, I can now save that. That that ain't that ain't shoe money. So, so, so we just kept paying the timeshare. No, we had to believe God for it. We didn't have to pray and fast. Just practical things we did. Because we was breaking ourselves from the mammon system and the mammon spirit. Are, are, you, are you listening to me? And we got it. And, and so, so mammon, I'm giving you, I'm all off. Mammon is deceitful riches. Mammon is lacking faith. Mammon is one of the rulers of darkness of this world. It says we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and rulers of darkness. One of those rulers is mammon. It tries to control your mind. It tells you what to do. It tells you where to go. It tells you what to buy. It tells you how to buy it. And you say, well, pastor, this is a great message, but I'm not rich, so this don't apply to me. You don't have to have money to have a spirit of mammon. As a matter of fact, some people are so poor, all they have is money. Let that one sink in for a second. And so this, this let, let me give you some more things about it, because I, I don't have much time. I got 18 minutes. Um, um, mammon shows up in many ways, not just a desire or lust or wrong attachment to money. It's envying others that have it. It's anxious over unmet needs. How many of you 
have deal sometimes with anxiety when it comes to your finances? Raise your hand. Be, be honest. You deal with anxiety. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it's disobeying God's directives regarding money. God told you to do a certain thing and you didn't do it because man, man was speaking louder than him. It's bad decisions and bad thinking about money. Mammon wants to keep you bound by its way of thinking. It, it seeks to strip us of God and leave us depending on the world system. Depending on the world system. Depending on the world system. Depending on a check. Depending on a stimulus. Depending on this. Depending on that. And that God wants you to always put him as the number one trust in your life. It makes the voice of God of none effect. Just, I'm just going through some things. It steals the peace of God. It pushes you toward man, reason, living. You're trying to figure everything out on your own. How has that gotten you? How far has that gotten you? You're figuring it all out on your own. It, it, it causes you to do whatever you got to do to make money. It steals your contentment. I know I'm going fast. You're never satisfied. It, you're never satisfied. The Bible says contentment is great gain, but you're never, ever satisfied. Spirit of mammon. It makes you spend more than you make. Hmm. It keeps you thinking to things that you haven't planned for yourself. As soon as I pay this off, then I'll be OK. But you have no plan to pay it off, which means you're just hoping that something's just going to kind of happen. And nothing just happens, people. Nothing just I wish. And I came up in this era when I was going through financially in a, a great charismatic era where people was their debt was being canceled and smoke was showing up in the service and people were slain in the spirit and all that. And, and I figured, well, this just going to happen. We're going to dance and shout speaking tongue and it's my debt going to be canceled. And that didn't happen didn't happen and I heard testimonies I woke up and I checked my account and all of my bills have been canceled and praise God that didn't happen for me and I went to pay my Sally Mae and $200,000 from Sally Mae was just wiped out of the system then they come back and say well, you know, what, they, what they happened they were, they were changing systems and see they had said that because you know we quit to testify we quit, the, we, quit, we quit the testify. And when you cook your dinner, you wouldn't pull your stuff out the oven half-baked and bring it to nobody to serve it to them. So why are you serving us a half-baked testimony? You know it ain't finished yet. Go sit down. Wait. Give God time to finish doing what he's doing in your life. And with your money. And with your marriage. And with your car. And all that. Stop coming up here to be quick to tell everybody what God is doing. It don't mean he ain't working. Just because you ain't posting don't mean he ain't doing a thing. We so quick to post everything. Be patient. Be patient. Let, God, let patience have this perfect work in you. Let God do it. I don't care if it takes three years. Well, people going to be, they going to be saying, let them say what they want to say. Divorce yourself from the opinions of people and let God do in you what he needs to do in you. Be living for the likes. Don't do that. Don't do it. But I, I wish that had happened for me, Kay. I, I sure hope that one day one of them was going to go in there to pay something and say, Reggie, it's gone. That didn't happen. It didn't happen. I'm not knocking nobody that it did happen for. It didn't happen for me. I believe God wanted to take us on a journey of restoring our mindset regarding money. And sometimes, if somebody just flips something from you, you don't learn the lesson. But if you have to walk through the journey of your own mistakes to get to the other side, there's lessons learned. There's valuable lessons learned you can pass down now to generations. I can stand here and talk to you now because I've walked. I didn't read a book. Nobody came and, I, and, and gave me a silver spoon. We walked through this. We walked through this day by day, month by month, tear by tear. We had to go in that office. We was embarrassed going in there to file for bankruptcy. The worship leader of a church up here with nice suits and ties on. And here I am down here filing for bankruptcy because I didn't know what to do. I was in trouble. We couldn't make ends meet. We wouldn't make, we had more bills than we had money coming in. And it was choking the life out of us. And God didn't wake up and say, it's gone. No, he walked us through this. Yeah, we prayed and we cried and prayed and cried and paid bills and saved and walked through and made mistakes. 
But we did it God's way because mammon always shows up at the door when you're in trouble. <laughs> Write that down. The spirit of mammon always shows up when you're in trouble. Here comes somebody with something you can do. Here comes somebody with some kind of thing you can get in. Here comes somebody with some kind of scheme you can be a part. Here comes something. Because the enemy always wants to imitate the father. The Bible says God is a very present help in a time of trouble. So when you get in trouble, here comes the enemy too. Here he comes with his plan and his scheme and his plot and his answers. Because the enemy provides answers as well. That's why the Bible says there's a way that seemed right to a man because you have different options you can take. And they all look good. They all seem right. It seems right to a man, but the end of that way is worse than when you started. Now you mad because I gave my $500. I ain't seen that man. But mammon, I told you what mammon does. It, 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 it lowers the voice of God in your life because I'm desperate now. And he told me, girl, and he said, and I believe him. And he has showed me. And he walked me through every page. And we, and he told me his sister had done it last year. And his mama did it the year before. And girl, I'm telling you, I'm going to do it. Are you going to do it? And, and you get caught up. Yeah. And you're sincere. But you're sincerely wrong. Mm -hmm. yeah. And you go live with it. Then when you get got, we don't hear from you. Help us not to get got too. I'm trying to help you not to be gat because I got gat. And so we file, okay? And we file the wrong one. Because when you're desperate, you move quick. So we file the one you have to pay back in lump sum. Which one is that? The 13 or the. See, you know, see, y'all know, see. It's a, so, they, so they consolidate all of our bills. And the one payment was more than the bills we already had. So what did we just do? We just ruined our credit for nothing. Because if I was already paying $2,000 a month and you consolidated out my bills, now I'm paying $2,300, what did I just do? So we said, we got this, we got this, we're going to go back and file the right one now. Just young and reckless, just, just moving. Because people were telling us, you should do this, you should do that, and you should do this. And he on the radio, and see, they, and see especially, and every, everybody that helped us was a believer and they hid behind Christian principles. That's why you got to be discerning. See, the wealth of the wicked is later for the just, and this is how you're supposed to do it. And we fail for these things. And I said, Stop, no more. No more. I realized this, I didn't know at first, but then I got teachings and I realized this is the spirit of mammon. I didn't even realize that. Now, let me usher myself out of this and get to where I'm supposed to be. Mammon disrespects seasons. Mammon keeps you believing you're almost there. Mammon to have you on the job too long or, on a, or leaving too, too soon. One of the basis, one of the cousins of mammon is fear and pride. Some of you, you, some of you you've, you've passed the test and God has said, now it's time for you to step out on faith and do your thing. But mammon has you. Because mammon says, but if I do, then what? If I leave, how I'm gone? I don't know. So they have you staying too long. Waiting on God when God has already spoke. Move, daughter. I'm just praying and waiting on God. Speak, Lord. Speak. Daughter, move. Speak, Lord. Speak. Speak, God. So you tune in everybody's broadcast. You're buying everybody's CDs. You're going to everybody's conference trying to hear a word from God. He's already spoke to you in your own private time. He says, move, daughter. He said, he said, go ahead, daughter. And you says, speak, Lord. Thy servant listened. But because what you heard, <laughs> it hit all of your fear. You said, well, that can't be God. Then, then now man reason comes in now. Because you don't quit, because you don't quit no job till you got another job. And you, and all that is great natural wisdom. But when God speaks, you got to move when God speaks. Because God don't deal down here. He, he says, your thoughts are not my thoughts and your ways are not my ways. And it may not make sense to you to leave a job and, and get you to have for 25 years. But you've been saying, God, I'm ready. And I went through the test and I passed the test. And God says, go ahead and do it, daughter. 
And you said, but what's the plan B, though, God? I, I, he, didn't, he, didn't, he didn't have a plan B. When I read through the scriptures, it was just Jesus. <laughs> Did y'all read about anybody else in case Jesus, you know, didn't do it? or It was just Jesus. It was called the plan of redemption. One plan. That's it. Jesus. And we said, I, I can't step until. And mammon, I have fear around your neck. Like that thing around sister neck here, the black power thing. It held around your neck like that. It, it seeks to control your emotions. If your joy level rises and falls due to finances, there's a spit of mammon at your door. If your home lacks peace because of money, if y'all doing good when everybody got paid, but it's not so good when money ain't there, there's a spirit of mammon present. Because I don't care if this ain't a pay week and we all going to put us a Tony's pizza in the microwave and get a slice. Come on here and make some punch or something and call it the day because we ain't going to be here always. Better days are coming and my joy is not changed because it's not a pay week. Your joy should not rise and fall based on money. You want to get to the place that when your check hit, this is what you said. Oh, I got paid today. <laughs> not, not you checking at, at 11.59. Did it hit? Did it hit? Oh, oh, we, oh, we got paid today? I didn't even know we got paid today. That's what you want to get. Because now God can speak and says, okay, the check came today. Give that check to the Boys and Girls Club over there in such and such time. Yeah. Oh, your next three checks? You didn't know they was coming. Pay this lady's rent for the rest of the year. The local church trying to build this? Give this over there. When we, I told you, we, when we saved our first thousand dollars. We saved our first thousand. You, you would have thought, you would have thought, Shanae, we had hit the lottery. We saved our first style, and we didn't have it a week. And the and, and Lord says, give it. And I said, now wait a minute. Now this says, wait, now we just saved this style, and, and, and you, can we at least look at it in the bank? You ever had the counts? You just go in there and look to see what's in there, just look at it. Just go, y'all know, y'all, y'all the only one, I'm the only one. Just, just, just log in, just look. So that, that looks real nice sitting there. Oh, praise God. So we put that thou in there. It was like, oh, this, we got a thou. We got a thou in here. This looks nice. We were sitting in service. And they were building out the mall. And the Lord says, give the thou for this house. And I'll take care of yours. And I says, I said, wait. I said, I said, London, I, I, think, I think the Lord said we should get $1,000. And I'm wanting her to say, we ain't giving our money. We, we, she's like, well, give it then. I said, oh, this lady. <laughs> Because the word had become real to us. So we, we were prompted to give money. We did it. And we got full return on it. Let me, let me jump here. I got four minutes. Let me jump here. <sighs> Mammon also drives you to think that your income defines you. You ever met somebody that think they are what they make? They act like what? You know, I, I, make, I make six figures. If you don't go sit down somewhere. I went to dinner with somebody one time and they talked the whole time about what they make. You see, because he's six figures. And, I, and I'm like, this is my last time coming to dinner with you. So on top of you being a jerk, this, this, this conversation is just not becoming of any of us. Nobody cares what you make. Why is it important at this dinner table? How much money you make a year? And so I said, so how much are you giving since you make so much? I said, I don't believe in all that. That's what I thought. Check, please. It's time for me to go. Because you've wasted enough of my time and the food wasn't even good anyway. <laughs> Mammon will help you factor God out. Go to John 6 real quick and I'll, I'll end here. I, I'm not even halfway through this. I just feel like, see. Okay, John 6. This is when Jesus fed the 5,000 men plus women and children. It's noted that Jesus fed about, about 25,000 plus people. He had a meeting 
when they finished the meeting, the people were hungry. The disciple says we should feed them. He said, okay, fine, but we don't have any food. And, and here's the deal. Go down to um, John 6, verse number 9. It said, there's a lad here which has five barley loaves and two small fishes. But what are they among so many? One of his disciples, verse 8, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, said unto him, there is a lad here. They're trying to figure out how we're going to feed these people. There's a lad here, Jesus. He got five pieces of bread. He got two small fish. And then he says, but what is that among so many? Mammon will have you factor God out. Andrew almost talked them out of this miracle. Not because God wouldn't do it, but he had already factored God out. Because when you're in trouble, God always comes to you. So they're in trouble. They're looking at 25,000 plus people and Jesus says, feed them. And nobody has any food. And Andrew says, boom, this was the Lord. Andrew says, there's a lad here. He got some bread and fish. That was God speaking through Andrew. Then here comes the other voice. Oh, but that, what is that? That ain't enough. What is that among all these people? He almost talked himself out of a miracle. Not because God can't do miracles. Because we factor God out too much. Sometimes we factor God out before the thing even starts. We sing God can do it and then don't expect him to do it. We expect God to fail. We expect God not to come through. We expect that God ain't going to do the thing. He cannot fail. Listen, listen, let him fail first, then tell, talk to me. But don't expect him to fail right off the bat. He can do it. And if you're in trouble right now financially, if you're in trouble right now financially, I can promise you through this message and other things, he's coming to you. He's speaking to you. He's giving you answers. Are you listening to me? Go to, go to Proverbs 3. And, I, and I'll end here. It's my fourth close. Hey, pretty girl, come on. If they win, what was the score? 48 to... 48 to 24. Oh, that's, that's nice. Well, praise God. Oh, y'all, I got to, y'all, I got to stop. They coming up. They walked up on me. Like, I guess I got <laughs> told y'all, this, I just, I'm just a pastor here. I don't know. So how do I address this mammon? Number one, the real issue is trust. I'll go real quick. I got five seconds. Three, two, one. The real issue is trust. It was never about money. It's always been about trust. And the bottom line for London and I is we did not trust God. I can sing. I can get caught up, get high in the heavenlies. I can weep. But when I finish, I didn't trust God. I did not. It's always been about trust. It's never been about money. The real issue is trust. I lift up my eyes to the hills. My help comes from the Lord. I trust in the Lord with all my heart. I don't lean to my own understanding. That's Proverbs 3. Um, Mark chapter 12. The lady walked around the offering plate and she gave the lowest offering. The Bible says, look at it, Mark 12. I ain't got time to turn. I'm finished. Go ahead and play some music. That's why you came up here. Y'all, you know, let me know I got to finish. Okay, go ahead and play the music. <laughs> this lady on here, Victoria Miller, somebody deal with her. Somebody pray with her. Here's the thing. Although, although we're not in the building fully, but we are here. Ushers are still us and greeters should still greet. Even online. If you are a greeter and you're watching online, greet everybody that comes on. Send them all a virtual hug. You're still greedy. You're just not here in the building. If this lady was in our building and came to one of us and said this, what would we do? Would we just keep scrolling? We would stop and tend to her. At least give a word of prayer. What was I saying? Trust. Trust. So there, there, Jesus takes an offering. I like that. He takes an offering. 
And everybody comes around and they give, they give big amounts of money. And there's this one lady who comes around and the Bible says she gave the smallest offering. And Jesus said this. He says, this woman has given more than all of you all. Yeah. How? Because she didn't give money. She gave trust. Yeah. Her offering said, I trust God. Because it says she gave of all she had. It's easy for me to walk around with $10 bills in my pocket and, and a 20 and give the Lord the 20. But it's, it's, it's a different ball game. When you're in service and hear the prompting of the Lord and you got $23.13 and you hear the Lord say, give $15 today. He said, wait a minute, God, it's going to leave me with $8. What I'm going to do? That 23 is going to give me the work next week and yada, yada, yada. And I was going to stop and get me number one on the way home so I can eat today. And he says, give, give the 15, give the 20. You're not giving 20, you're giving trust. He says, I ain't got but 23, I trust you, God. You can do with this 23 more than I can do with it because it, it ain't enough anyway. She gave trust. When was the last time you gave trust? I ain't talking about money. When was the last time you gave trust? Last time you says, God, I trust you. It's crazy. I literally don't know how it's going to happen. But I trust you. You are a firm foundation. You won't let me down. So I try, my knees are buckling. I got tears in my eyes. I don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. But I trust you. Last time you gave trust. Because mammon attacks your trust. Mammon said, nope, trust me. Trust me. Trust me. Borrow 20 from Shanae today. Trust me. Trust me. Ask Pastor Kelly to pray for you again. Trust, trust me. This is what mammon says. God says, I've been telling you all along. I got you. I tell my kids that. I'm like, dude, I got you. What are you doing? I said I had you. You ain't never got to doubt. You ain't never got to doubt that in your life. But Mammon tells him, I know more than my dad. Because Mammon is not just money. Mammon says, I can do this on my own. And I'm like, but dude, I told you, I got you. And God has been saying to you, I got you. Thank God for the elders that come and pray. But you don't even need it all the time. I got you. I got you. Because it's never been about money. It's always been about trust. But when you trust God, you will give your money. We went from, from holding the tide to releasing and returning it. To giving in every area. I'll tell you this, our giving got us to where we are today. It. You heard giving your way out? That's what we did. But it didn't happen till our mindset changed and we put an end to mammon. Will you trust him today? Stand up, stand up, stand up, stand up. Will you trust him today? Lift your hands up, lift your hands up. Lift them up high, lift them up high. High as you can lift them. As a sign of surrender, as a sign of Father, I repent for not trusting you. I repent for doing my own thing. I repent for allowing mammon to make decisions for me. But Father, I trust you. I trust in the Lord with all of my heart and I don't lean to my own understanding. I acknowledge you and I trust, I expect you to give direction. I expect you to give answers. I expect you to show me ways out. I expect you to give me a plan. I expect you to lay this thing out for me so we can win financially. But it starts with me transferring my trust. It starts with me putting my trust where it belongs and that is in you. Wherever it's been that wasn't you, my job, my, my side business, my boyfriend, my girlfriend, my husband, my wife, my, my fixed income, wherever my trust has been, my unemployment, my stimulus, I take it from there and I put it in you today. Because you are my source. You are my source you when everything else dries up when everything else goes crazy you are my source you are um i'm gyra for me you will always provide for me and so i trust you with everything 
I trust you. In Jesus' name. If you believe that, if you mean that, clap your hands right now. Come on, clap your hands! many of you have been blessed by this month of teaching amen this has been so full and rich and just as we closed today's teaching of about mammon and and um how it keeps you focused on the wrong thing the, the, the we thought the issue was oh so and so needs to get a job or they won't give me this scholarship or i can't get a job and really the issue has always been our trust with the lord Hallelujah. So the, the word tells us the steps of a good man are ordered by God. And a good man, a good woman, trusts in the Lord. He's not going to leave you, lead you into a ditch. He's not going to lead. Mammon will try to make you think that the Lord's plan is going to lead you somewhere desperate, hopeless. And that's not the truth. God is leading us into paths and streams of righteousness. But we have to trust him. Amen. So at this time, we want to give you the opportunity to demonstrate your trust in the Lord. Hallelujah. We want you to um, opportunity to give your life to the Lord or rededicate your life back to God. That is the greatest trust that you would you are giving him your life you are saying i want you to be lord over my life i want you to lead me and guide me i trust you god i trust what you did on the cross for me i trust you for sending your son jesus to die for me and to and to raise be raised from the dead so if this is you if the lord is talking to you if you have trust issues and you realize i haven't made that commitment to the lord this is your opportunity. Give your life unto God. Rededicate your life unto God. If you want to trust God because maybe you're on the outsides and you've never been a part of a local church, you've never been a part of a body, you've never had pastors, you've never had accountability because you have trust issues. You don't trust other people. You don't trust churches or institutions. This is the opportunity for you to demonstrate your trust and become a partner with Lifeline System of Churches. Amen. And if you would like to receive special prayer, now is the time. Text the word good life, G-O-O-D-L-I-F-E, good life to 54244. You'll receive a link and that will give you to Zoom where we have live elders and ministers waiting to pray with you, stand with you as you make your commitment of trust into the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you've been blessed today, um, we just want to thank God. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for uh, coming into the house, either virtually or here with us today. Um, something uh, a, a priest of mine, when I was a Catholic, used to say uh, when he would dismiss us would be, uh, thank you for coming and serving. Um, be blessed. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. So go in peace to love and serve the Lord for the rest of this week. Thank you.